beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. For as long as we are alive, we will continue to lift up the name of Jesus. We will continue to see that his glory is revealed. One of the things that the advantages of appearing before God every time is that fear dies in your life. Fear is a very wicked spirit. It's a dangerous spirit. Fear has the ability to magnify anything negative. Are we together? When we come before the presence of God, the things that brought fear to you, when you come and watch other men that God has helped, squash them into pieces and trivialize them, then you go back full of faith. Because Satan loves it when he surrounds you with fear and makes it look as if, ah, this is over. This issue in your life and family, there is no hope for it. These are the kinds of platforms where we call the devil a liar. And we don't just say it by calling him. We, we prove the excellency of the victory and authority of the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're discussing the dominion mandate. This is part two. And um, what a joy. I consider this topic very, very, very instrumental to our understanding and our growth. As you know, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has a ministry. And one of it is not just to be the light of the earth, but to equip believers. Our assignment as ministers of the gospel is to prepare believers to open them up to all the dimensions and the possibilities that are required to be effective in representing Christ are we together and so we piece together all the dimensions that will be required to grant you access to reign and this for me is one of the the cardinal teachings of the Christian faith the dominion mandate because this encapsulates the will of God right from before the fall of man and he still represents his desire for us today um, we discussed a few things last week we last week was basically an introduction to what I call the original plan it is important for every believer to know and to understand the original plan the average believer has no idea um, as to why we are here what necessitated our being here why the evils um, when you understand the dominion mandate all of a sudden there will be a synergy the happenings around you why the devil seeks to destroy men why the holy spirit was given to us why we must be effective without revelation our commitment will be false and they will not be able to last are we together now 
so we looked at the original plan and it's found in genesis chapter 1 let's look at 26 the bible tells us how that when god was going to make man the prime of his creation genesis 1 and verse 26 and god said let us make man in our own image we discussed two things i said how that number one adam was not the first man created no adam was the first man who introduced our dispensation that is true but adam is not the first human species created the first created in the image and the likeness of god are we together the bible is full of several instances of beings and events that happened that predated adam himself the mere description of the word subdue as part of the the instructions given to adam suggests that there is an enemy an enemy looming somewhere hallelujah and i did tell us that um it's important for us to understand that the ultimate please listen the ultimate for the believer is not just heaven now i know that um evangelically we teach that everything is heaven and we're not necessarily wrong in that sense but the whole idea is not just heaven god's idea is not just to save sinners something happened there was once upon a time where the man god created was not a sinner are we together but there was an instruction given so adam was not on earth just because of sin he was on earth doing something sin came and met him interrupted the plan so I, I gave us an analogy last week how many of us remember how that there was an original plan are we together and that plan is contained in the word dominion a system of legislature and governance in one word dominion is governance an exercise of sovereign control now the, the nature of man's dominion must be um, it man was not given absolute dominion man was given delegated dominion there is a difference are we together now the an adumbration of man's dominion was revealed by joseph in egypt are we together when joseph was exalted he said you know i have been made a prime minister the prince every other thing was under his control it was only in the issue of ranking that pharaoh who was a representation of the type of the father jesus being joseph being the type of jesus and the egyptian woman he married was the type of the church are we together now so all of those are prophetic events that reveal several things and um, we see how that god gave man authority the bible says the heaven even the heaven of the heavens has is the lord's but it says the earth has he given that's a very important thing the earth has he given to the sons of men when man was being given that access to dominion satan had it are we together satan was somewhere around the earth and he had everything clear and from that time he began to seek for a way to negotiate with man and the only way he could get man to fall was to do get man to do what he did treason rebellion are we together he came through eve and then lured adam and i have taught us again in this place how that adam fell willingly everybody say it adam was not deceived the person who was deceived was eve Eve was deceived Adam fell because of love he didn't fall because of ignorance are we together and that remains true today there are few men who fall because of ignorance it's easy to deceive ladies it's very difficult to deceive men they fall because of love the second Adam also fell because of love Jesus was not deceived the father didn't say just come and look at it and then just close heaven and say i meant to say you should come and die no it was a well calculated thing his wife that eve had now fallen there was a separation so the second adam there were many things that parallel jesus and adam he's not just called second adam just because of the nature of sin no are we together now he's called the second adam because he did what adam did 
and so he looked at his bride and he stripped himself away of his glory and he came to join that bride like Adam fell from the glory of God are we together now so redemption is a restoration process redemption was not an initial agenda redemption was a restoration process of course in the infinite wisdom of God a program already had been created like that but experientially speaking right in the garden there was no discussion about apostles and prophets and teachers and koinonia and churches and meetings and all of those no 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 it was about government it was about governance it was about legislature it was about replicating the fullness of the life the glory the character the nature the influence of heaven to be able to find expression across all that territory i hope you know that not every part of earth was like the garden of eden the garden of eden was a type of god's intention because as i'm going to be teaching you it is how god advances so he creates a prototype of his intention plants a man there and gives that man capacity to extend that influence so adam's assignment among other things was to be able to piece together the resources that made eden eden and start extending eden and there were two major ways he would do that one by creativity the other by reproduction take note we are going to deal with this we are discussing very deep kingdom issues now reproduction creativity all other dispensations did not know that there was a possibility of reproduction by a man meeting with a woman producing seed it was always creation not reproduction it was our dispensation that introduced another dimension the only way things were extended in dispensations before us was creativity so if you wanted something it was purely a product of invention but now God revealed a dimension of himself you see marriage has nothing to do with a man and a woman marriage is a dimension in God he only brought the woman out of a man so that they will be actors on earth the primary purpose of marriage is not just children the primary purpose of marriage is to reveal something about God then children come as an advantage so when you lose the prophetic implication of marriage the physical activities are just a waste that's why satan likes gay marriage it's not about a man and a man a woman and a woman it's about corrupting a program are we together now yes so when a man likes a man or a woman likes a woman it's not just inordinate desires that's that's not the issue the is is that men are actors on earth and satan is rewriting another script to describe something bad about God because he dwells in light there is no darkness so he brings a man and a woman these are the only actors who can best describe that mystery called marriage so Satan is switching scenes and bringing a man and a man and a woman and a woman the realm of the spirit understand the message that is being sent are we together reproduction reproduction I'll be teaching you different dimensions of dominion later on and you find out that authority exercising authority is just one out of the many ways are we together yes there are many facets authority exercising authority is one of them by speaking passing decrees number two the ministry of prayer especially intercession is another system of dominion number three reproduction you are not manifesting dominion if there is no reproduction hallelujah so the fall of man was a veering off of the original plan for many of us the foundation of our christian journey just starts with the cross or the coming of jesus it looks very spiritual but it's wrong the foundation must start right from the beginning are we together i taught you something in theology that we call the law of first use or the law of first mention that means that when you want to examine the character of a word or the the usage of a context you have to search for where it was first mentioned 
study the context of his usage and that's what you use as a compass are we together now so if you want to know the purpose of man we must go back to the book of beginnings genesis are we together now and then see what god said about that man you don't search around for scriptures of prosperity and wealth and then find out where man just appeared in the scene you must go down from the beginning and god said when man appeared he never had any sound on earth the first sound his ears will hear was the speaking of his creator be fruitful multiply etc etc and all of that so it's important that we look at that and study it very importantly the fall of man led to the necessity of redemption jesus himself coming the entire program of redemption was a restoration program not a restoration to heaven not a restoration to heaven please listen carefully not a restoration to heaven a restoration back to god's original agenda even heaven itself as we know is a subset of that agenda revelation tells us clearly i told you the bible finishes with the beginning of a new dispensation am i against heaven no am i against the reality of the fact that saints will be caught up to the heavens no not at all the bible acknowledges that but then it does not stop at us being in heaven we are returning back again right to the earth so it is important that we understand um god's system this series has three main areas we're dealing with the second today the first is what i call the original plan helping you giving you an exegesis of the beginning to understand that god's original idea was not just for us to have cars and houses go to school get married have children train them the way an average believer and well-meaning believer the way an average believer is trained is not makes him or her not to be productive let me tell you something it matters how you are trained and it matters who trains you are we together let me repeat myself it matters how you are trained and it matters who trains you the person who introduced jesus to you did something to you very serious it was more than a message the person who has introduced the faith life and the spirit life to you may have communicated his or her limitations it matters what you are told about satan it matters what you are told about demons it matters what you are told about the holy spirit are we together it matters what you are told about purpose and destiny it matters it's not enough to just have information it is important to study the communicators of those informations because this is where error and limitation came from so we have sincere people who are well-meaning but they have not paid the price to take advantage of the ministry of the holy spirit and the word to study comprehensively the program of god unfortunately our bible colleges our schools of ministry do not do so much justice in opening people to god's blueprint so the entire scope of the average believers understanding of what we call our pilgrimage the journey is this i am born one day i receive an evangelical message and then i'm told to give my soul to someone i cannot see and then i hand over that soul to him and then in in return i hear that he gives me a life whatever that is i just know i have it and then i'm also told that my name is in the book of life meaning i've escaped hell hallelujah glory to god what else do i do i'm encouraged to be a worker in church then i'm 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 encouraged to get a wife or a husband that is like me then two of us are encouraged to make sure we have children are we together then we are encouraged to make sure we train those children as a sign of responsibility then we are told to just live our lives giving glory to god regardless of what happens and then we are told to prepare for death that is that is that is another writer script that is not god the word of god that liveth and abideth forever is very clear as to god's intention so most believers are largely confused you were in secondary school and they told you just keep moving university just finish up 
you came from the world into the university from university they say now that you are going into the world and you know all kinds of sympathy happens and then you now enter into the world and people say get a job and you get a job and then get a wife or get a husband have children and then try to have cars depending on your level of carnality if you want to if you, you are broke and nothing happens just manage it and all sorts of 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 teachings that look like they are nice then one day you find out that you are sick you don't know why you are sick and then you go to a man of god who says you are healed and you don't even know why you were healed why is god interested in healing men why is satan interested in afflicting people then you find out that a dear lady gets married listen i'm giving your work your faith work meaning and then the lady is barren and she goes to the doctor doctor i've been a nice lady i didn't live a wayward life what is happening and the doctor says that's what i'm trying to figure out i was trained to study just give me time and the doctor is confused cannot find out what is wrong and the innocent lady lives in pain and her whole ambition is oh god give me a child or give me children think how confused we are on earth everybody is trying to suggest to someone how they feel their lives can be better so someone says look if you don't have money your life will be bad and then the other person says so this is what you know i've been looking at okay let me try to get the money then you become a millionaire and you are happy and you find out that that realm has another trouble you cannot even explain are we together and this is how we live we receive advices from confused people who confuse others we mentor our children they grow in that confusion and the earth is just a cycle of failure it is important that among the the curriculum that we are given we must be able to give meaning to our lives that's why people commit suicide why not just because they are frustrated their frustration only amplified the meaninglessness of living that's why people do all kinds of stupid things with their lives abuse the word abuse means abnormal use you will misuse everything god gave you if you do not know why it was given are we together yes when you carry 10 bottles of alcohol with the writings written boldly that it destroys you you are not pouring it on the ground you are transferring it into your body it's called abuse an abnormal use why because you do not know that that body was a loan like you collect a loan from a bank if you collect a loan from a bank and you misuse it you are already signing in for disaster so we abuse our bodies when god gives you a wife and you don't know why a wife came they ask you why are you married you say well i just found out that i was age was not on my side and they said i should find somebody it so happens that this is the scapegoat who i now call and you abuse that innocent woman are we together or vice versa there are women who abuse men you now find out that god gave you a calm person who says sorry for everything and now he happens to be the victim of your emotional confusion your the 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 confusion that surrounds your trying to define your life and you vent it on your spouse and where both of you are bold enough to confront one another the children become the victims it, it is still an extension of confusion when people celebrate golden jubilee they celebrate it angry wondering what they've been doing for 50 years oftentimes most of them are not healthy they can't hear well they can't see well they made costly mistakes in their youthful days that they are paying the price now they didn't have access to the mysteries of the kingdom they've destroyed their lives they are poor they are broke their lives are meaningless it's alarming the rate of suicide right now it used to be in the west you know the developed nations and now even in africa you get up you don't find your child you just see a letter farewell and you see someone on a tree now if we don't do something about this let me tell you right now counseling is big business psychology psychologists are getting a lot of um, um business now because there, there are all kinds of trauma centers not just from plane crash so a human being can be alive and just enter a trauma center and say look i need help why i don't know what i'm doing i'm seeing things i'm hearing voices my life is confused we need to return back to god's blueprint otherwise we are going to live absolutely useless lives when you understand the dominion mandate then marriage becomes useful children become useful prosperity 
becomes useful education becomes useful are we together when you understand the dominion mandate it will make sense to you every requirement the bible gives so we cut away from god's original agenda and then we keep telling people don't use don't live a useless life live a life of meaning and the person say what is a life of meaning get a job get a job and the person says, okay he gets a job and fights all over his office till he retires aren't you seeing the way our lives are it's a circle think very carefully when you were 10 years 12 years just in with your little friend or your little brother or sister about the confusion in life now look at you. you are getting to 40 you have joined that vicious circle of confusion even as preachers so many preachers do not know why god gave them a church god just called me and said raise me a people a people of power a people of holiness a people of grace a people of prosperity and we put that that team on our churches our members come and they don't exactly understand what we're saying someone gives a testimony oh god gave me a breakthrough we clap but to what end god made me a minister god increased the dimension of his grace then pastors chase after anointing and you ask them why and they say my church is not growing my life i can't i can't live like this no bread on my table i need to access power i need value so they access the anointing like escapism from poverty then when they become a little anointed they are now happy doors of ministry are opening and then honorariums are coming and all of that and then with that that's how people live i want you to refuse to live a meaningless life are we together you must insist somebody now is about to get married tomorrow in this confusion he's confused he's holding the hands of another confused person and then they are starting something they don't even know where it's going will they dance yes will they eat yes will they be happy eventually no no this is not about demons god's original agenda is the key to joy and happiness not money not education ask those who have these things rich people hang themselves and drop their money and will it to a cat why because i have five useless boys in my house give this cat my inheritance our world is gradually demonstrating that disobedience to god is costly so we must return back to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see There are many of us today our parents are angry with us why because they want you to follow the path they followed and the word of god is already telling you that ah they like the way their lives are and they they do not believe that something they are doing is why their life is like that they tell you just follow don't please don't embarrass us just let it be like that oh i want to get married to who yeah, the brother he's starting up mm, don't do that you see if you do this we are going to beg are you not seeing the way our lives are and then people control people and we are victims of men's thinking there's a lot of gap let me tell you something you need to re-examine the concept of age this thing called age the most excellent part of age is the wisdom attached to it if age fails to come with wisdom it is useless did you hear what i said yes that a man i'm not you know we have i have i have so much respect for elderly people you're elderly here i honor you with all my heart but i'm teach. we need to redefine our philosophy of i am old and i am young because there are many old people that are responsible for the pain 
of people on earth age gives you access it should give you wisdom only age does not just add wisdom on its own at best it can give you sophia human knowledge the fact that you made a mistake does not mean you have found the answer so you can tell us in 1961 i made a mistake did you find the answer you may still be in that ignorant at that point you are just familiar with the problem not the solution how many old people mentor young people you are about to marry and oh no problem i remember i married in 1941 that asked that man's wife whether she enjoyed marriage see her an old woman she would tell you i only enjoyed marriage for three weeks in 40 years that's the person mentoring two people and he said listen to me no i won't listen to you no sir i will respect you but i reject that kind of life you will not define that template for me do you know why god is called the ancient of days you know why the, he is called the ancient of days because of one word wisdom take away wisdom because satan too is an ancient of days he's old the bible tells us satan is old what is the difference between him at least they are old enough i think any man that is older than six thousand years is old satan is not six thousand years old before six thousand years he was already called that old serpent yet he's as foolish and stupid as whatever because it is only a fool that says in his heart there is no god and the bible says even the demons they 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 try to ignore it so they deceive men into believing there is no god get your life into your hands and trust god to use the word of god as a compass and redefine your life because there are many of you looking at me right now we are doing what we call jack of all trades master of none this is how they taught me to live oh this is how i will live I have my little job with NMPC. Another person has a job with one, uh, one para, paramilitary. And then we are on our way going. We don't know the purpose of children, so we abuse them. People give birth anyhow and make the children liabilities to men and society. You just come and somebody passes a child to you and say, take care of my child. As if, as if the person was part of the arrival of the child. Why? Because the people doing that do not know the revelation behind Abba, Abba, Father if before you source a thing you must be ready to sustain it this is what should govern getting pregnant not time do we have the resources the wisdom the grace the capacity for a child if a poor man gives birth to seven children he's a foolish man correct not just because he wants to demonstrate that he can give birth he is abba source you must sustain so you leave those children and they become armed robbers remember i told you satan is looking for bodies and because those bodies cannot be handed over to god satan will find available bodies and they plague our society today kill people rape women and children maim people destroy the peace of society we have violated the dominion mandate and this is why this teaching is very necessary are we together revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 the original plan was what i discussed i spoke to us extensively about the fall of man and i spoke to us about how that redemption was a remedy system now that you are born again you must be able to have a redirection back to god's original agenda and i said a few things to us I said how that there are certain conditions that are required number one is your natural birth for you to be able to stand and execute the dominion mandate one is your natural birth you must be birth born of a woman because when Jesus came he came to redeem all those who were descendants of Adam listen let me teach you something everybody look up hmm. the blood of Jesus is only applicable for descendants from adam if you were not part of that dispensation the work of grace and the cross is not relevant to you otherwise satan and demons should also be forgiven 
because a statement was made on the cross it is finished what is the it everything that had grieved the heart of the father the legal claims of justice had been appeased the bible says he shall see the travail of his soul isaiah saw and he shall be satisfied so if he says it is finished that means the demons that neglected their original estates that are now in everlasting chains alongside satan i've told you satan is not the most wicked of the spirit no he's not the belief that satan is the most wicked of all the spirits the king of all the spirits is is not necessarily error it's just a limiting knowledge because satan is not bound in everlasting chains there are spirits more wicked than him that are bound in everlasting chains the bible says that they were bound even for the sake of the elect are we together I pray that God will give us wisdom. You see how peaceful your life will be? This is what Satan does not want us to know. Man of God, listen. This is what Satan does not want your congregation to know. Because if you don't know this story, you won't see the necessity of your victory and you will not know that you have been restored to now begin to walk in dominion. And demons will play games with your life. They will play games with your destiny. You will live your life under the mercy of situations and circumstances. so your natural birth then your spiritual birth or what i call a rebirth the bible calls it a regening regeneration regime every possessor of adam's genes born of a woman is born in iniquity are we together now born in iniquity means that legally you are under the influence of satan the prince of the power of the air as wrong as well as the elements in this system and you cannot carry out the dominion mandate with the genes of adam so there is a regening a regeneration are we together now when jesus christ comes into your heart a real miracle happens there the bible tells us there is a translation the bible says he that is joined to christ is what help me one spirit one spirit not two spirits one spirit so christ comes to live in you he creates his throne in your heart tabernacles in you in the person of the holy spirit now watch this the moment that happens you are now ready not to dominate you are not ready to dominate you are ready to now begin the process that restores you back to god's original agenda the dominion mandate now this is where many believers miss it and pastors ah, pastors if you do not understand the difference between prophecy and experience you will mislead people the speakings of the bible are twofold the prophetic communications of god are we together now and the experience of that communication when god speaks from his perspective it is done because god has no past no present no future he's called alpha omega time is not something that god is limited by he is not even limited by eternity eternity is still a subset of him if he dwells in eternity then somebody created it correct are you getting blessed tonight and so you must understand that this god that we are talking about is not limited you must understand his systems and how he works when god speaks he can say sam when you enter that house and by the time your fifth child comes you see that and sam can say i'm not even married that's the speaking of god god will never say when you marry uh -uh. he talks to men as if he's talking to himself this is this is why many people do not know god can look at you and say promise take care of these 30 children whereas he doesn't have a job that's god because in his word is also the grace to convert that prophecy to experience so he will not speak to you like he's speaking to a man let me tell you one way to know 
that a word came from God is that there will be no resources at that point to make it come to pass whether spiritually financially etc if God speaks to you and you have the resource to do it you had your brain or a demon Noah build me an ark to stadium to stadium of I mean the ark of Noah was stadiums too like that are made of gopher wood how many years plantation agriculturist will give you that Noah spent 120 years building that how many years 120 years but the way God spoke it it was as if rain will come next week this is a mistake many people make God can say I have sent you today this is how God speaks because your whole lifetime is still his today so God says today I have anointed you as a prophet to the nations then you get up with lack of understanding the systems of God and now ordain yourself and try to get visa to Ghana or smuggle your way to UK and you die somewhere in the forest and it there will be is it a lie no God spoke to you but you did not understand the difference between prophecy and experience it was Paul who was teaching the church in hebrew and began to teach them in chapter 2 and told them he says now god did not leave anything under the feet of man are we together now he was trying to quote um, the the psalm of david right what is man that thou art mindful of and then he says but now that's experience in god's eye and in god's mind nobody should be sick in god's eye and in god's mind there should not be one sinner on earth because right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain go to the prison is there a thief there please answer me is there a thief that went into the prison today yes so does that mean that the efficacy of the word is not working no it is he already said it is finished and there are still criminals it is finished there are still barren people god will look at someone on a wheelchair and still say it is finished yet he's still there the day that the anointing and the faith of that person comes he enters into the experience of that word that's why god is resting but he says there remaineth a rest not for god for his people what is that rest the experience of his finished work so we keep moving around with ignorance and making a fool out of ourselves and demons are happy and hope we continue like that and then at the end of it the equation does not add up and then we are frustrated and humiliated is God helping us tonight tonight we are going to look at the second aspect and that is discipleship the dominion mandate has three segments number one is a revelation of the original plan the fall of man and the restoration through jesus that's the first the second is discipleship what is discipleship a system of training for reigning a system of reprogramming a system of recalibration into the image and the likeness and then next week we are going to look at the third segment governance so these three segments number one the original plan the fall of man and the restoration process that we call redemption the second is discipleship discipleship is not some some doctrinal curriculum of people no it is the way people are trained to carry out the dominion mandate listen nobody reigns just because you have received jesus remember the scripture that i gave you last week right that they that received two things number one the gift of righteousness number two the abundance of grace so two requirements to reign one you must receive what the gift of righteousness no man can walk it is god's very nature imputed through faith when you believed in the finished work of his son his death the burial the resurrection and the glorification not just the resurrection jesus did not just ascend and is hanging in the sky he is seated 
it matters because efficient starts with the revelation of his seated position so it's not just the death i know great men like kenyon and all of that talk about the death burial resurrection but it's more than that the death the burial the resurrection and the glorification that coronation was what david saw the lord said to my lord the lord the ancient of days said to my lord the christ sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool hallelujah discipleship why why discipleship let me tell you something because you see when you receive jesus christ everybody listen carefully when you receive jesus christ automatically it gives you access the life of god is in you give us genesis chapter 1 please verse 26 god created man there was a twofold design and this design this configuration must be gotten back for man to be able to walk in dominion number one is what his image the first purpose of discipleship is to carve in you the experience of the image of the christ the spiritual dimension the spiritual composition are we together now paul said this he says my little children in whom i travail until christ be formed in you the formation of christ in reality the indwelling of the word is a reflection of his image because the bible says let us make man in our own image and the bible says christ who is the word is the express image of the godhead he that has seen me has seen the father are we together now philip said show us the father and then it's sufficient he said philip have you been so long with me philip and yet you have not seen the father whoever has seen me has seen the father so christ came as the image so man must first be made in christ now listen let us make process let us make process the moment that life of god comes the making is not automatic the life is there the spirit of god is at work in you if it were automatic then you do not need the word and you do not need the, the ministry of the holy spirit the formation of christ now please everybody listen this is one of the indices for spiritual growth the moment believers get born again if you have ever wondered what next let me tell you what next is the spiritual development of those people so that the life the character and the traits of christ will be fashioned in them are we together now the image so pastors apostles prophets evangelists together that fivefold ministry they work harmoniously to help people achieve this are we together the image of christ being formed in you that's what you call character that's what you call the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the recreated human spirit when you read galatians chapter 5 verse 16 paul was teaching the galatian church and he said this i say then please give it to us galatians 5 and verse 16 we'll read 16 then we'll go down to 22 he says this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh so the key is what walking in the spirit you must be trained to walk in the spirit the bible says to set your minds on the things above and not on the things of the earth it takes a training the name of that training is discipleship discipleship is not just an indoctrination into a church's curriculum and beliefs are we together because many of us hate the word and i understand because it has been used religiously by people who are not even born again discipleship is how people are made to reign verse 22 he says but the fruit of the spirit there are all kinds of theological understandings but the fruit of the spirit is love listen joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance he said against such there is no law meaning that it is impossible to be a violator with these conditions this is the atmosphere of the spirit the fruit of the spirit combined 
creates an atmosphere that becomes formidable no power and force of hell can penetrate that all these things you call the fruit of the spirit are and they are ingredients that structure something the bible says that we are built into a spiritual house like living stones one block upon the other you are adding love joy peace patience gentleness let me tell you every attack on a believer's life comes when there is a lapse in one of these are you hearing what i'm saying listen are, are we learning am i am i blessing you every attack on your life will come based on an advantage that was taken as a result of the absence or the deficiency of this from where comet um how does the bible put it quarreling and all this among you you see that when there is no love there will be jealousy when there is no love there will be bitterness when there is no joy the bible says for with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation is that true it says the joy of the lord is your strength when your spirit is weak there is no joy joy is not laughter joy can only be given by the spirit unbelievers have happiness only believers can have joy is of the holy ghost joy has nothing to do with circumstances it is a state of being that is based on a revelation and the presence of the holy ghost count it all joy my brethren when you go through die how can you rejoice knowing this knowing this this is the secret of the joy knowing this without knowing it you cannot have joy so when you are going through diverse situations you lost a loved one you lost a job something is not working well ordinarily you should be sad but knowing this there is a revelation that the trying of your faith work at patience and then that let patience have her full course then it will make you mature it will make you unfruitful knowing this hallelujah are we blessed we must build the fruit of the spirit in people you can be educated as educated as anything and lack gentleness goodness meekness and never be promoted correct you went to school but you are not gentle at all the company throws you away because you lack the fruit of the spirit do you know all the the commandments of nigeria are a human attempt to get men to have the fruit of the spirit so when they tell you pay a bill of hundred thousand naira and all of this is their own way of trying to force you to feel the pain of stealing somebody's thing it is their way of trying to give you love when they jail you because of impatience they are trying to get you to be what to have long suffering because you are not patient that's why you wanted one million in one day and you jump somebody's fence or you stopped a luxurious bus let me tell you the chaos in our society is because there is the absence of the image the charisma, the image of christ every law when you whip your child it is because he violated something that is here when a husband beats a wife something is missing peace sister when a brother comes to say i want to marry i want to marry you do you know why you don't say yes immediately you go back and start cross-checking you don't even know this is what you are cross-checking does this guy love me it's not just love god alone does he have joy this brother is an angry brother peace i watch what he did to somebody one day long suffering this guy looks like a hustler he puts his hand in everything is he gentle no the way he approached me was bad is he good no he's greedy does he have faith he come you know and all of that and when you calculate all those things the other side of the equation creates your response and you go back and say no now you may not know that this is what you were checking when someone is advising you he's helping you society can never go into decadence when the image of christ is enforced the image of christ is the unifier whether you are from kogi state 
plateau state listen to me whether you are yoruba or Igbo, all those disparity in culture that is as a result of bad habits can be neutralized if the image of christ is formed in believers so when you see someone who is hausa and someone who is um Igbo or someone who is yoruba or someone who is from the south south four of them you will not see any noticeable differences why because they have allowed the genes of adam that was a part of the course that came through their earth and programmed something oh the men from this place are stupid the men from this place are irresponsible when you allow the character are we learning the dominion mandate it says man was made in the image it was not possible for adam to hate it was not possible for him to be impatient how did man fall because there was a pastor that said something satan became that preacher that's why when god came he said who told you not who showed you a voice reprogrammed you so how will men return back to this a voice will reprogram men the spirit of god is in his words as you are hearing this something is happening to you you are now seeing that this is not the issue of marry from here or from here this is not the issue of i am from bielsa i am from south south in our place this is how we do it all those our place when you talk like that let me show you whose descendant you are on earth there are two families one those who are connected to adam and everything adam came with two those who have been regined 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 into another family so you cannot look at me and say you come from so so place your people are drunkards i don't know who they are i've been called out of every tribe genesis please give us revelations 5 verse 9 i want you to read it god has to deliver us verse 9 1 2 no gen um revelations 5 media 5 verse 9 revelations revelations let's read it one okay verse 9 5 verse 9 thank you okay read it one to go and they sung a new song uh -huh, saying thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed me unto god how by your blood out of kogi plateau state emo enugu out of the irresponsibility that comes with the men in that place out of the pride out of the selfishness out of the hatred the bitterness he has redeemed i've been called i sympathize with my people but i'm not part of that tragedy i am another tribe i've been carved out listen if you don't believe this thing you are not a christian it's not just that it's bad you are not a christian at all what else do you believe we have been called that's why in koinonia here you don't see anybody do anything which tribe i don't even want to know where you are coming from i know that there are two families the ones on earth and the ones in heaven we are all related the blood the veil torn a family no we no man after the flesh oh your father is this i'm not saying don't be sympathetic to people in your area or whatever jesus started preaching from the jews but some of this carnality this tribalism and this these garbages we bring there is a thief in every tribe there is a fool in every tribe there is a devil in every tribe every tribe has witches and wizards there are poor people in every tribe so it's just that we, you know we make it look just because you saw more northerners looking stupid you come up with a theology that there are all more Igbo people and say every Igbo person is it's just money monger it's a lie there are people who have exempted themselves called out not everybody is a money monger not every lady is a materialistic person just looking for a millionaire it's a lie not every brother is an irresponsible person not knowing where he will go some people have seen the end they have seen you know what i'm doing to you is a reprogramming this is discipleship i am unifying you now it is on the strength of this you can call somebody brother and sister that issue of brother and sister for many people is carnal it's just carnal because you were told to say it 
brother um, Alpha, brother Femi and the rest. But when men like Kenneth E. Hagin, R.W. Shambach, when they used those names, it was out of this revelation. I do not know you in the flesh, but if you are in Christ, we are brothers, you are welcome. They extend the right hand of fellowship. Everybody say the image. We need the restoration of that image. There are many people who are not spiritual. Live likeness, we are coming there. We must teach you how to be like Christ. Be like Christ. Be like Christ. That's the image. The image talks of being. The likeness talks of doing. The image talks of being. Being. Who you are, not what you do. Let's go back to Genesis. Please give us verse 28. We'll discuss more 28 um, next, next week. 1 verse 28, Genesis. Now everybody, I want you to observe something. And God blessed them and said, listen carefully, be fruitful. He never talked of having anything. You be it first. Then later on he now said, have dominion. So God's focus when he's beginning to work with man is in being first before having. We have reversed it. Somebody gets born again today and we say, you must have. You must have a car. You must have a house. Which is, he, he is having something he has not become. He's trying to have the likeness. No image. So one million naira comes. He has. But he has not become. So it will destroy him. Are you saying that now? Yes. Have a wife. But he has not become a husband. So it destroys him. The primary strategy and pattern. God's kingdom pattern for discipling people and nation is to focus on their being before they are having listen those who write programs for foundational classes in churches must subscribe to this otherwise you are going to produce a powerless carnal many times devilish believers that's why there are witches and wizards in church because we are passionate about having so if i am born again and in two weeks i come with a flashy shoe flashy cloth i'm showing you how much i help me preach back to me i'm showing you how much i on the strength of that you will say i have faith and the brother who has just one trouser but the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is working in him we look at him and we say no this one you don't have so because you don't have the word is not working our focus is on having spiritual men rank and rate people first by being so i can look at you and all you have is one trouser one bible but i see christ formed in you you are on your way fulfilling the dominion mandate i know that this guy will soon be a principality listen believers let me preach to you stop focusing on having focus on being first the image comes before the likeness God speaking to us this is a message to someone already because our society is full of falsehood men and women who are obsessed in having having why because we want to prove we live in a carnal world that only interprets and rates you based on what they can relate with none of these fruits of the spirit is something that is tangible in itself their manifestation can be tangible as you relax you relate with people and environment but you cannot know so i look at this brother and what he has is peace what he has is joy and i think those things are cheaper than money so the brother would rather kill the agenda to being and then focus on having when God begins to deal with a man, you find out that the curriculum he gives you has nothing to do with things like teaching of prosperity. It's going to be prayer first. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. Are we together? And then you begin to teach. He's drumming on you issues of character, holiness, morality. You have to greet people. You move around and think, I am from this. I am a yo-yo guy. And he says, look, drop all that thing. 
oh i am the nobody talks to me i was a capon in this and god says that's that's your business and when you want to mess up he tells you listen nebuchadnezzar was not what he had he had money he had power so he could run his mouth and talk nonsense and then he was made to become a beast for how many years seven years a beast with the brain of a man the moment nebuchadnezzar recovered he became a preacher read your bible never empower people who have not become it's dangerous it's a lesson many of us will have to learn that you are a millionaire does not mean you carry a small child who has not become and give him money that's why i like Igbo people when they are doing business they bring in an apprentice no matter how rich that man is there is a limit to the exposure of that child is that true he now begins to do business and they study him one day they will leave money in the drawer five hundred thousand and throw some small things scattered and then the man will go out he will come back and find out that one thousand was missing and he will keep quiet that boy has not become the day he ever says settle me the man will say i will slap you. if you ever talk of settling you have not become you want to have you have not learned integrity you have not learned character you have not learned submission no hmm. is god teaching us being have you become an expression many of us today i can show you that the reality of god's image has not been found formed in you because that anger is still there you've been born again for five years you pray in tongues more than everybody but let somebody just say something small your name is sam and somebody just said uh, john uh, sorry what's the name you don't know my name look i i i know who i am if you do this is you think it's a sign that you are spiritual no I can look at your life and rank you spiritually in a moment. I don't have to see a vision. Away with your cars. Away with all the money and the checks and all the prestige and the English and etc. All those things could not have him. I look at your life. When I look at your life, I'm searching for the Christ. The word of God already painted a picture. And then he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Then the Bible says he had something and was something but he gave them up and became 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 not possessed the possession happened when he became therefore god had so highly exalted him and given notice that people first became before they had the secular system reverses it packaging and falsehood is trying to portray something you are not so i borrow a shoe i borrow a suit i borrow watch are we together i borrow makeup i borrow hair i borrow anything what am i trying to do it's not that i i'm trying to show you i'm not cheap bottom line correct whether i'm cheap or not is 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 my own issue but i want you to know i am so conscious of what your perception about me that i don't mind faking everything around it but someone can sit down with gary and say no problem i'm not ashamed this is where i am now i will take it with honor and dignity if i don't look if i look cheap to you like that no problem i agree with the process but i am becoming next time somebody looks at you and tries to make you feel like you are a useless person you you cannot do this and that no problem you are becoming you are becoming line upon line this is what is happening to you in koinonia many of you do not know what is happening to you god has already given you a vision you will be a great prophet a great apostle but you are saying oh god nobody has seen me god says sit down you are becoming you want to have access to the mic you want to have access to a church your body is itching you to have access to lead a program and god says sit down you first become before you have is god speaking to us discipleship leaders learn to discern people who have become before you give them access don't give people access as a general thing if there are four people three people you now say oh you have given you too much access let me share it with this no in the kingdom distribution 
is be, be, as a result of a careful study i have discerned you can fake all those things and act like it but the truth is that if you are not it will show he said by their fruits not by their gifts by their how do you know them by their a gift is dash a fruit is a sign of maturity so someone insults you and says emeka do you know that when you were entering the university i already had phd and that thing stinks you and you're like i'm a doctor don't talk and the old man adam adam wants to resurrect with his foolishness and all of a sudden that regening has been crystallized and you laugh and say god bless you ah, ah. and he says is it the emeka that i know that used to beat everybody i heard of a regening let me tell you if you claim you are born again and there is no evidence of transformation you need help you need counseling you need a retreat praise the lord there are so many there are angry pastors they are wicked pastors they are angry people they are all kinds of arrogant people my name is so 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 and so and so do you know the one you we are looking at you and we are still seeing your culture if I still look at you and see your village then you are trying to say that calling out of tribe and nation has gone it's not it's not yet real discipleship training for reigning bringing you into the culture of the kingdom their way of life this is how we live in the kingdom we live through the law of love we live through the law of joy we are peaceful people in the kingdom ah my temper will kill somebody oh somebody hold me you are you are acting the moment you are acting like your village the old man is attempting to resurrect you must keep it dead we do these things and usually there are also other carnal people like us who hail us you know that hailing thing can be so demonic if we are not careful <clears throat> remember they hailed jesus and they said hail king of the jews a few weeks later on the same people said crucify him he say you say yes you are looking at me crucify him let his blood be on our head we have to be careful there is one who deserves to be lifted and hailed forever our job is to confirm into that image here we stand David Damson and lift our hands and we will hail Yahweh hail Yahweh here we stand and lift our voices together we hail Yahweh hail Yahweh we will hail So your first assignment to believers is to make them spiritual the first assignment of a man of God to believers is to extract carnality carnality means a way of living they must be aware of the divine life the divine nature the presence of the Holy Spirit you turn people to become spiritual the life of God is in me I'm not ordinary. I was born by an ordinary man, an ordinary woman from social state. But now, I am a possessor of God's life. Literally, not just some Christian gimmicks. No, I believe it. It's a fact. It's true. How many believers are aware of that divine nature in them? It tells the way we respond. The Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all he that cometh from above he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly i come from above born of god whatsoever is born of god overcome it overcome it overcome it challenges are not unusual defeat is what is unusual whatsoever is born of god 
overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcomes even our faith but as many as believed him even to them that believed upon his name gave them power to become power to become power to become power to become they looked at paul ah, ah. paul who used to kill people saul that would collect a letter and go and slaughter people what happened spirituality listen this is not an issue of being charismatic if you don't train your people to be supernatural to approach life and approach things with the consciousness of the divine life the consciousness of divinity there are great men of God all around the world who have spent their lives and spent the years of their lives bringing the church into a consciousness, reprogramming and recalibrating our mind that the believer in partnership with the Holy Spirit is invincible. We must restore these teachings. There are many carnal believers on earth in a bid to balance, in a bid to teach. We have made people carnal, helpless. No matter what happens, they say, oh, well, things just happen like this. You are in every way divine that's why we don't walk in signs and wonders how do you stand and stretch your hands to somebody and expect a transference how do you do that how do you stand and speak there is no wire tied to you to someone outside because carnally speaking i can only see with my optical eyes but when you step back and and walk in the realm of the spirit then you know that the vistas of the spirit are not 2020 infinity infinity left only to your faith so i can stand here and see someone in overflow three and speak and expect the power of god to touch that person why i wasn't born this way it's called spirituality there's too much carnality that's why when you tell people god will bless you they still want you to they want to reduce themselves and many pastors this is the limitation of exaggeration on education when you think that because i'm educated i have a master's in this i have a phd in that now there are very educated people in this place but when people trust their education and then you see them castigate spiritual things anything that does not subscribe to the law of dy dx they fight it are we together mm. You anoint somebody say what is this with this oil they write all kinds of articles titan is a scam by men of god to raise money you see them and then at the end of that ungodly blog they now say my name is pastor so so and so i'm a pastor with living christ parish or whatever it is and that is deceptive because somebody will say ah, this is a pastor and you know carnal people will relate to those things immediately because they are carnally minded are we together anything that massages the flesh they like it once you challenge people why should you come and spend the night praying what is all this blah, 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 thing 10 hours five hours three hours please we are not human beings god gave us a brain and they say that to castigate spirituality the bible says through faith hebrews chapter 10 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 through faith we understand please give it to us through faith we understand that the world systems 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 were framed by what please help me they were not framed by cement and water they were framed by an invisible substance called the word of god so that the things which were seen were not made of things which do appear that's why god tells somebody that by this time next year you will be a landlord and spirit wants to receive but the carnality in his mind will fight it how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and he says have you forgotten the power of the highest this is the mystery that makes things happen i want to show you why we don't get results god has declared that this is a year of triumph but only spiritual people can receive a carnal man receives not the things of the spirit neither can he understand them why because they are spiritually discerned let me tell you how to know you are not growing by how much you rely so much on your senses and how embarrassed you are to be spiritual about life 
because there are people who are embarrassed to be spiritual not just that they don't like it it's a thing of shame it's a thing of shame oh you are playing and just playing a worship song and it's entering your spirit i beg we are human beings a worship song entering my spirit what is there you are listening to all kinds of music you don't know the difference are you seeing now many people in church you have a selection there's gospel music there's another one by a, 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 a secular artist that you want. I don't have a problem with secular artists. I only have this, a problem with the spirits behind them. I love them as people, but there's a spirit behind them. Music is not all about melodies. Music is about sounds and the access that those sounds give spirits into your life. So someone tells you, look, I went to school. This I went to school. He said, much learning make thee mad. I went to school please allow me to play this song so you just play women of faith for a while just to ease the guilt of feeling carnal then somewhere in the selection something just comes babylon babylon then to witchcraft to witchcraft and you are lying down your body is sleeping your spirit does not sleep and something is happening to you how many of you have listened to a message and fell asleep and it continued playing and you followed it how many of you were sleeping and you were acting what that message was saying it now becomes graphic not just that you are hearing suddenly you find yourself in scenarios doing certain things making confessions these are spiritual things the ancient knew this we who are modern people have become so bankrupt of spirituality pastors let your people be spiritual don't pity them because they prayed five minutes and they're feeling tired and you say no you know our church there are balloons everywhere let's not make people feel you are praying and somebody falls down and the way his head hits the the, the chair even you you say Kai. hallelujah amen let's stop why do you stop a baby when he's walking and he tries to fall you allow them hi yes you say sorry but you don't stop the work We must be spiritually minded that's why the gifts of the spirit cannot flow in us we're not spiritual that's why you cannot believe that god can open you up that's why when you hear testimonies the testimonies come to a carnal mind and you start looking at the people scientifically i hope they are lying hepatitis cancer this lady that i know how about allah it's just that koinonia we, we everybody will just keep quiet but me we 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 know at, at that were you blind blind when because of how people are carnally minded there are people who don't believe anything even if they see somebody fall down they will still say somebody pushed him somewhere Hapa. believe us you know sometimes when people argue i say ah, ah. prophecy you hear them say they gave somebody the names of people maybe there are people doing it but is it easy to read to to keep names try it is it easy to act like that Carnality, because we are not spiritually minded if by next week God opens a door for David down we can look and people will now say this guy he touched something we always credit unusual happenings to the realm of the spirit that is a clue that to remain unusual you must remain in the spirit you are like mere men there is nothing worth celebrating the dominion mandate is a restoration into a life of spirituality that the spirit realm governs the physical realm yes it does the spirit realm you must build yourself the divine nature of god the character of god the second dimension let's look at it quickly is the likeness please give it to us again genesis 1 26 likeness talks of the functionality how god functions the image of god talks about who god is his being but his likeness talks of how he walks mm. believers there are some of you who god saved many people through your hands but you don't know how to build them because you have not been taught the first thing is to help them become spiritual 
that's why when we when people get born again here we introduce them to the prayer department not just to be workers in the house why because praying they are filled with the holy ghost they are praying you begin to teach them the value of the word of god you begin to teach them the value of communion you begin to teach them the value of corporate fellowship these are foundations then when they are strong then you begin to teach them how to walk like god you start teaching them speech everybody says speech the first teaching on how to function like god is how to speak like him hmm. you reign you reign you reign you reign Kadosh. you are mighty on your throne you reign you reign you reign you reign Kadosh. you are mighty on your Then you begin to learn that he has made us unto our God. Listen, kings and priests. Your priesthood talks of your ministry to God. Your ministry spiritually. That kingly dimension talks of governance and legislature. As a priest, the jurisdiction is a secret place. The place of incense. The place of ministry where you send that incense, it will rise to heaven. The prayers of the saints, the intercession, fellowship, communion, koinonia, that's priesthood. Then you take away that priestly regalia and you put on your crown and your signet ring and you hold your scepter and step out. That is legislature, that is governance. Everyone must manifest this king priest dimension. You are a priest. When you come to the house of God, you are ministering to God. You are offering up worship and intercession for the saints. You are advocating for the destinies of men. You are communing with God Almighty. That's priesthood. Then, you take on that regalia of kingship. And then you legislate. And the Bible says, where the word of a king is, there is, please help me, where the word of a common man is there is sound but where the word of a king is so i have been made a king and a priest not unto my village unto god and so i can legislate listen the first thing that must begin to change in your life to prove that you are functioning like god is your speech your speech ah we are the weak ones we are the ones who are this and that uh -uh. You know, the Bible says, do not say before an angel I made a mistake. Your speech, it matters. Are we together? Your, your words begin to be cultured by the word of God. You don't speak all kinds of things and invoke woes upon yourself. Your communications become spiritual. Bless you. Good morning, sir. Oh, Aluta Continua, Victoria Escarta, you are prophesying. Others are speaking, they are not kings. But you, you have become a believer, you have been redeemed, yet you are still speaking. You have come out of Egypt, Egypt is still in you. And now, when you speak, you are sending sounds to the realm of the spirit. And you are programming things. They speak and it doesn't happen. You speak and it happens. The suffering continues. You massage hardship pressure puts you and pushes you and everything that comes out is your hey why you why you and, and you, you all this kind of very very unbelieving talk hallelujah you hear a bad report in the name of jesus christ a thousand may fall by my right that's a king speaking ten thousand by my by my right side none shall harm me only with my eyes will i see and behold uh, uh, the reward of the wicked ah i will make sure you don't marry and she tells you to your face and you smile a cause causeless shall not stand there is a mystery that no you see all this threat the woman said this ah, ah a cause causeless shall not stand are we together yes will you ever finish this house the hand of zerubbabel 
that started this work it's not something you just reminisce in your mind it must be vocalized it must be vocalized I am the head and not the tail I am above and not beneath the Gentiles come to my light Lord favor surrounds me like a shield this is a believer talking let me tell you what ordinary people would do the people in our villages know this you see what they do during festivals the major activity in festival is talking and dancing then death follows later on in the evening people start dying because people are talking talking chanting things you are moving around you just sense a presence that is not of God uh, don't sit and say Kai, I'm not sure be sure by praying in tongues start tongues first let let praying in tongues precede you while you are verifying so that should in case you can be praying and hear a shout from another room and say oh I see There are human beings that carry spirits. They are innocent. They are on the way. They are on their way coming to your house to introduce spirits, not unwillingly, but all of a sudden you sense an urge and you begin to pray. And they call you and say, "Sorry, I just feel like not coming." And you know that not only have they revealed something to you, they themselves need to be helped. You can easily know the spirits that control men by their reaction when you pray, because the spirit influences them to act in certain ways. That's why many of you, when you finish praying in your house, that's the day everybody quarrels you. I teach you the mystery now. The moment you pray, agitations from everyone. You, go, you enter your room and the kindest person in your room is attacking you. The devil is sending a response. If you know, you attack him back with joy. 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 When you turn to Canaan, don't shout at me. Yes, I'm coming back from Koinonia. Say, you claim you are coming back from the church. And look at how you match this. I'm sorry. It's okay. You reign, you ancient Zion king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh. So you learn how to speak by faith. Mark 11, 22, 23. If thou shalt say, give it to us. Jesus is teaching the disciples how kings speak. He's teaching them the language of royalty. Listen, this thing is not just some, some you know, many believers after working for a while, we claim that those who do these things are baby Christians. It's a joke, a principle that Jesus himself introduced nothing in your life will ever change until you sustain capacity to command it to he told job has thou commanded thy morning if you don't command it something else will impregnate your morning and jesus answering said unto them have faith in god the correct rendition there is have the faith of god operate like him for verily i say unto you now whoever shall say to what say to what so it is okay to speak to things not just to human beings jesus our high priest spoke to a mountain spoke to a tree who told you they don't hear biology did not teach you that they hear but jesus the spiritual teaches you that they can hear who told you the earth does not hear who told you that when you stand and speak over your family miles and kilometers apart they don't hear so you can stand and begin to legislate they call you at home and they say in the last three days everybody has been sick you say okay i know what to do and sometimes it's not just becoming a priest you jam the door put your crown carry your regalia Zekatos i send the wind on Aaron. carry the anointing from here to that location you must believe this thing i'm teaching you i'm programming you to be spiritual and how to function like god if thou shalt say unto this mountain be thou removed that means when you speak to things you must be specific specific give us this day what do you want 
ah, I, want, I want to do well that's a vague and careless prayer you must call it by name whatsoever Adam called that was the name thereof so you name your destiny peace you name your marriage joy are we together you don't turn and say this stupid husband no way my marriage is heaven on earth I call it what it is I refuse to be poor I reject it it doesn't glorify God it doesn't help me fulfill my assignment I decree and declare favor surrounds me if there is a garrison of favor men are coming to bless me today this is a king speaking you are impregnating your morning while others are sleeping you are speaking Shagato Kaskariada. favor comes in the name of Jesus no accidents no nothing I am immune to activities of witches. I am above. I come from above. While you are speaking, somebody is sleeping and laughing at you. By evening, they tell you the person is in the hospital. When he comes back home, he will never laugh at you again when you are speaking. That laughter is, a, is mockery. Mockery is initiated by a spirit. When Jesus wanted to raise the dead and he said the dead was sleeping, People who were crying turned and started laughing. They mocked him and said, get out of the house. Go out. Get out of the house. I want to raise the dead. And when he was alone, he said, little girl, Talita Kumi, I say unto you, arise. Are we together? Yeah. When Abraham had a conversation and he heard that God was speaking about a child, Sarah had it and laughed. That laugh was sarcasm. One of the proofs that somebody has a wicked spirit living in him is how sarcastic he is when believers make faith proclamations over their destiny. You see someone while he's jumping, his shoe has already caught and you laugh. You see that kind of laughter? It's a spirit. It's not just an act. It's not just a negative disposition. That's why when we say pray and speak and other people stand and they're wondering, ah, ah, you mean this is how these people speak? That's, that's what brought us here we acted like him in the name of jesus people are blessed tonight the miracle service is a blessing koinonia is a blessing everything flourishes in this ministry because a word waters it words are powerful god rules the earth by the word of his power so you learn the speech of the kingdom you learn how to manifest faith but one of the things that you also learn are the systems of the kingdom. I'm teaching you how to be like God. Let me teach you a deep mystery. Our time is gone. I'll teach you this and then we'll just pray. We'll continue next week. Have you been blessed? God never does anything in the Bible as a process twice. Read your Bible. God's system is to initiate things once and build a system around them for continuity believers hear me i want to teach you how to function like god that's why many businesses fail that's why many people cannot carry out the dominion mandate we'll discuss it next week when we talk of governance he says be fruitful then he says what multiply replenish subdue you can't do those things if you do not understand god's system so god initiates a process as a template then designs a system around it watch this god created man as her dispensation knows once and never had to create man again are we together he created man with the woman in him and then he brought the woman out and designed a system in them and says continue the result of that reproduction 7.2 billion people on the earth in spite of an average of eight people that die per second the earth is still growing because a man built a system systems are powerful are you hearing what i'm saying systems are what powerful when you do business by repeating the same thing you are not acting like god you create a product this is what many people have done google and all of that they don't know about you yet you carry their laptop because there is a system they made it once that's why coca-cola and the rest they have different branches around the world what did they program in those branches systems everybody says systems the greatest conglomerates in the world today operate through systems the same thing happening everywhere the catholics roman catholics i love them among other reasons because of the power and the dexterity 
of their systems systems maintain consistency it is how god functions god has not needed even when man fell when he was about to wipe the people in noah's days he still preserved the seed and out of those eight families new beginning he started another race systems jesus came as the firstborn of the begotten he died and nobody has had to die for his sins again a system of salvation whoever believes in him shall not perish are we blessed yes africans do not understand the systems of the kingdom so we do the same thing again and again do you know why god created things like videos systems so i don't have to preach the same message twice i preach it once and it is captured in a system and while i'm sleeping i am multiplying the influence to millions of people it's called systems don muen has never met with you yet you have been blessed by his ministry the anointing also obeys systems that's why everybody in every corner listening to don muen's songs will feel the anointing think about it you are not a leader if you do not master building systems when I learned this principle, it made my life easy. Look at how God built a system. God himself transferred governance to man and programmed that man and handed the earth to him. Systems. Now man is mishandling the earth largely, but it's a system. The first crops that came out of the earth, the Bible says God himself planted. I hope you know. Read your Bible. God planted trees, systems, and then in the tree, he built systems. What is another name for that system? A seed. This is how God operates. A seed is not money. A seed is a mystery that represents the system of continuity. Continuity. In every man born of a woman, there is a seed that represents potentials for continuity. In every woman, there is a womb that receives a seed as potentials for continuity so once there is a seed and there is a womb there is reproduction hear me once there is a seed and there is a womb there is what reproduction a seed without a womb cannot bring reproduction a womb without a seed cannot bring reproduction you need to find the wombs of there are many wombs on earth a woman's womb is only an adumbration of many other wombs the morning has a womb every day has a womb you can impregnate it with words and it will give birth in the daytime the pregnancy that happened in the night can be delivered for you in the daytime your mind is a womb information are the seeds when you plant informations in your mind like a woman gets pregnant over time it will deliver to you and change your life are we blessed god never does the same thing twice when you find out that you are trying to do the same thing as a leader the dominion mandate is not working in your life there must be a system of continuity let me tell you is one of the reasons why we never grow and never flourish how you know there is no system in your life is that your absence stops continuity when your absence stops continuity then there is no system so you are the ceo of the company you travel for two weeks you come back and meet hellfire there's no system nobody knows what to do no system if i'm not around for one year in koinonia it will still continue running the only thing that will be missed is my unique grace and anointing why systems hmm. that's how pastors should train pastors you should be if 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 pastor alpha pastor femi and promise are all my pastors for instance if you hear pastor alpha you should not feel bad that i was not there that systems i have reproduced myself in him when you hear him you will miss me i love it every time i'm not around and people send me a text they say apostle we miss you but god koinonia was fire i said that's right systems 
but because of our inferiority and this village mindset that we have grown with every time you are not around and things don't work you are happy do you know why that's why many leaders do not mentor and train others because they think it is their way by exclusively capturing knowledge and keeping it how many people have died with secrets that can turn the lives of people how about anointings no if he carries the same anointing as i'm carrying will he ever respect me again look at god he didn't wait for you to be renewed he gave you the holy spirit straight up immediately after confession he granted you the holy spirit he didn't say change no he granted you the holy spirit to help you part of the ways that we rule and dominate is by building systems around things your prosperity is not something that is in the hands of god today your prosperity has been programmed in a system are you hearing what i'm saying god can in the systems are supervised so it's not like they are random there is still an individual supervising them the same way you put systems you can come and look at it and you can decide to influence it that's a sign that you are the owner of the system somebody can slaughter someone as a thief and go back home and get his wife pregnant that system will not stop because he's a wicked man now you'll go to hell if he doesn't repent but as far as that pregnancy is concerned an unbeliever who does not know god taps into god's system of wealth and abundance hallelujah i was telling the school of ministry students that there's something i'm going to teach them about finances that i've not touched and i've not taught any of the sets ah it's a revelation that god gave me that i mean if i teach you that and you don't prosper i don't know how to help you again i i don't know how to help you systems let me give you a little tip of the iceberg that being employed forever till retirement is a cause because in god's system you start under people but eventually the goal is for you to be established yourself so the spirit of servitude is such that you continue to serve a man if you not everybody will have platforms like churches businesses but even under those platforms there must allocate a place that allows your grace to function that is the spirit of god and is the program of god that's why he carved out earth and gave man but he gave man delegated authority that means it is exousia but it is still supervised so he can call man to order like pharaoh could still call joseph to order but pharaoh did not interrupt it is the system we run koinonia with that's why sometimes you never come and see me check ah, have the leaders fixed this flower well systems there are men of god you are preaching you are preparing salmon they just call you and say one wire has caught you bike by yourself to sabo and buy the wrong wire and bring it back before you finish you you forgot everything and then you are stressing yourself when you are doing everything by yourself it's a sign that you are not functioning like god let me show you why many of our parents are under stress they did not mentor the young people so they kept doing everything now the youngest person in the family is 31 yet it's still father and mother that is providing food because they did not teach them how education does not teach you how it just enlightens your mind it is mentorship it is discipleship that teaches you how so a man of god starts a ministry and there are ordinary people and then you start teaching them how to prosper you show them the pathways to the anointing are we together you don't hide it there's nothing to hide these are the secrets you guide them you mentor them they receive measures of that anointing that is upon you you have built a system and then they begin to function the key to hardship is to not be able to reproduce yourself through systems you will pay the price and you will never last everything that has lasted and outlived the founders subscribe to function like god we're going to pray dominion the chaos in our society today is because we have not conformed to his image and his likeness 
his divine nature and his functionality you see why it's important to get people saved because that is the condition that can guarantee the potentials for dominion ye must be born again that's why we make altar calls that's why we're still going to make altar call tonight because there are people scattered inside outside who need Jesus now most preachers don't tell you why they just say come to Jesus there is a hellfire somewhere to burn the living daylight out of you and you run out of fear you are born again and you don't know what you ran from and to what dominion this is not just the issue of heaven it does not take so much to be assured of heaven because it's not something you do by yourself but when it has to do with your reigning listen the degree to which you have become like God in his image and his likeness is the degree to which you measure your success and your prosperity are you seeing why life cooperates with others life cooperates with God and everybody who functions like him life was designed to cooperate with God alone if you are not God life will not cooperate with you so our needless sufferings and pains is because we have fabricated methodologies by ourselves attempting to get God's result our way let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your own someone is rising beyond every shadow every shackle please rise up on your feet let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light let hope let it rise tonight darkness trembles in listen i want you to look at your life carefully we're going to pray now you can trace every negative thing to your life to your inability to have conformed to the image or the likeness there are troubles and sicknesses that have come to us today high blood pressure because of worry when the peace and the joy of god is in you listen there is no drug that can give you peace there is no drug that can give you joy when you smoke cocaine and snuff all kinds of things they don't give you peace they attempt it you know why people try getting high and they take substance they are looking for peace they are looking for joy they are attempting to use things life was designed to respond to you once you are a possessor of the gift of righteousness and then abundance of grace that comes through knowledge through knowledge the bible says good understanding giveth favor but the way of the transgressor is hard could it be hear me that this is the missing link in your ministry could it be that this is the missing link in your business could it be that this is the missing link in your family why are things not working i'm always fighting with my wife i think i made a mistake i married a wrong woman it's a lie i think i and my children are stubborn there may be something you are fighting your children because you are trying to force them you are violating something about the dominion mandate you don't force people you give them a revelation you force your children to wear your, the cloth you want you force them to read the course you want every time you force men rebellion is inevitable that's why the children revolt but when you give them a revelation you see that God never forces us I set before you life and death I set before you blessing and cursing but here's my advice choose life why so that you can live in other words I want you to live and if you must live the key is choosing life not I force you to live that's what parents are doing and that's why children revolt when you resort back to giving them revelations look it looks like i'm hard on you but it's because i love you i've made mistakes in my own life and i want you to be a great gentleman i'm proud of you and i see potentials that gentleman by himself will start talking in well by himself will stop dressing like rags and remove all those things and start babbing well and not looking like a thief the gentleman will subscribe immediately because you gave them revelation but when you use force on people you are acting as the antichrist man was not mentioned 
in every element that was given that man should dominate man was not given there are pastors that dominate members and they never see they are anointed but people never like them they can walk into your house any day anytime cook for me fried chips for me i'm a man of god add this and that for me after all elijah told the shunammite elijah did not force her home. the woman had a right to refuse the trouble in the world is a negligence of the dominion mandate nobody was born rich nobody was born poor are we together people program themselves something in my life my life is hard creation is hostile to me in the garden of eden nothing fought adam nothing satan was still alive but adam was immune he only gave access lift your voice and pray and say lord what key do i need to apply to my life please pray pray why are things not working in my life he spoke and said let them have dominion why is my marriage not working why is my job not working why are doors closed over my life why do people hate me i'm anointed why is my church not growing why can't i experience the anointing of the holy spirit why am i poor and broke and begging at all times let hope rise darkness trembles in your own one more time yeah. let hope rise tonight darkness trembles in your holy light say na 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 ma say na na let hope let it rise tonight darkness trembles in your holy hallelujah hold on genesis please give us something just came into my heart and i want to share because genesis chapter 4 we are going to read verse 8 let me show why you why our world is a wicked world because you see every time people fail instead of taking responsibility that i am violating the principles and the laws of dominion usually we look for people to fight the bible says and cain this was after the sacrifice are we together now the sacrifice of abel was taken and the sacrifice of cain was rejected what was wrong violation of patterns violations of systems are we together now Cain got angry Cain can be your uncle Cain can be your senior brother you see where enmity came from I am the senior brother in this family how can this younger one be successful that's what was happening there are men who fight their wives there are others who fight their younger ones there are people who hate themselves and the Bible says it came to pass that when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him what fruit of the spirit was missing no love no love no love are we seeing there now next verse and the lord said unto cain listen where is abel thy brother and he said i know not that's the liar there at work in him the manifestation of satan at work am i my brother's keeper no kindness no he had become hardened and wicked verse 10 listen he says and he said what hast thou done the voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground verse 11 he says and now thou art caused from the earth which had opened her mouth to receive thy blood oh dear i think i've lost myself the verse i'm looking for i think is the verse before verse 8 that says um, Cain was angry and God told him if you have done well 
will it not be accepted maybe it's, i'm sure it's the verses other verses in front we'll leave it because of time that's the scripture i was trying to look for that after cain met with god and was angry god told him come on that why are you angry that i accepted your brother's sacrifice and rejected yours if you did it well will it not be accepted but if you do not do it well sin lie it at your door i think it's before yes it says give us verse six verse six we'll read six and seven and the lord said unto cain thank you this is the verse thank you media why art thou what angry god is speaking to you now emoji why are you angry at another man's church that the church is increasing and you are not increasing businessman why are you angry at another man's business why are you angry that uh, your sister is having her children well cultured he says and why is thy countenance falling that's frustration verse 7 if thou doest well according to patterns shall not thy shall thou not be accepted then he says and if thou doest not well sin lieth at thy door see let me tell you every time you don't do well you will not get results and when you don't get the results anger frustration will come in that's why you hate successful people there are times that you see somebody with a nice car and just say thieves all these young pastors they are the ones who know how they are manipulating you see someone anointed and you begin to speak cynicism is a product of not obeying the dominion mandate was given to all men everybody say all men the ministry god called specific people into ministry but capacity to execute the dominion mandate legislature and governance reproduction fruitfulness the capacity to subdue was given to all men there's no need for jealousy a lot of things that happened in zaria angelic feathers gold dust silver dust you know people started having these strange encounters and one i remember one night the lord told me he said i'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry it didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn people will go to pray and for hours all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality and god said no if i don't take it away one demon will give a, an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so god withdrew that experience god only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so god will not release it until the body is taught the money is safer with bill gates is safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors because they have worked on their minds they are better treasurers for god than us so all it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming but not not some money monger kind of thing it won't come that way anyway i just thought to share that let's look at the ministry of jesus luke chapter 6 I study the gospels a lot because the ministry of Jesus inspires me he's the greatest model that I have and I like to I like to study his idea what did he do what was captured in his ministry Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19 Luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19 this is Jesus now having the sermon on the mount. Okay, I'll just read it from here. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples, a great multitude of people, listen, out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear, now listen carefully, the people came to hear, Amplified says to listen to him, he came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing 
and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits so we see the kind of people that came for Jesus's meetings those who were sick they were sick terribly diseased they came to listen to him there was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of God so they came to hear and to be healed the second category of people we see they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed unclean spirits the source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits and the Bible says and the whole multitude listen sought to touch him why for there went power out of him to heal them I love the ministry of Jesus so the Bible tells us why the people got healed that there was power other versions say virtue there was something that Jesus had that will leave him into the people and the moment it entered them they would discover that their sicknesses were gone are we together hmm. Acts chapter 10 when you read verse 38 Peter was teaching that was a salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power listen it says who went about doing good went about doing good went about doing good so we see other things that jesus did that were not captured he didn't just heal the sick alone he didn't just deliver the oppressed alone he went about doing good breakthrough is a good thing restoration is a good thing he went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus's ministry and and by the way I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry Jesus's ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven are we together now he said it is expedient that I go why so that the comforter will come it is to your advantage advantageous to you that I go because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the Spirit himself, without measure, so that we can partake of that Spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the Father had sent me. This is Jesus speaking. The Father sent me. I now send you as the Father sent me. Both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power. And every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression not just in people you know receiving impartations here and they're wonderful but we expect the power of God to heal the sick we expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results at some point in this service we should see the superiority of light over darkness is that true at some point in this service God should be able to step over your issue to see that that 10 year long issue 
just dissolves like this just like that is that true if that happens then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of jesus but listen to me brothers and sisters if this does not happen we are wasting god's time and we are wasting the time of god's precious people that's why we prepare for all of the meetings especially the miracle service because you have not just come to watch a man you have come to see an extension of the ministry of jesus you have come with your requests you have come with your medical reports you have come with your pain you have come with all kinds of oppression you have come with all kinds of closed heaven and you're saying lord if you are the only one i know who can help me let me tell you your coming is faith enough did you hear what i said you're leaving your house to come is faith enough it's true like a patient goes to the hospital once you're in the hospital just leave the rest to the doctor then the doctor begins to prescribe and this is what is happening to us an extension of the ministry of jesus let's look at one scripture mark chapter 1 21 mark chapter 1 and verse 21 and they went into capernaum still the ministry of jesus and straightway on the sabbath day he entered the synagogue and taught it's interesting how jesus held his crusades he would take out time not just to preach but to teach jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive are we together if the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone it, it becomes volatile the people receive it and then it just evaporates but when they are taught it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received you can lose something you have received it's true you can lose healing demons can leave people and re-enter them again but when the word of god is taught it gives you the basis are we together now so jesus taught in their synagogues we're reading it's, it's a long reading let's see how far we can go just keep just continue and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there was in their synagogue i love jesus see how his miracle service was as soon as he just finished preaching it was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom and there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit and the demons began to cry out 24 saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us we know who you are the holy one of god and so on and so forth and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him this is jesus for you this is jesus for you because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes it is a big deal did you hear what i said <laughs> doctors can treat sickness they can cast out devils machines can show an elongated lung or heart but it cannot show the spirit sitting there are you hearing what i'm saying these spirits are living entities they can hear they have a system and a structure they were designed to respect some people and disobey some people are we together they understand ranking in the spirit so when you issue a command as jesus did 
and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at Jesus used this. The people were astonished. They said our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is, you share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No, sir. Haba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell so well that there is no pretending about it. That's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28. And immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Let's see what happened. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever. And anon they tell him of her. Now Jesus is healing. We saw him cast out devils. He's about to heal now. And he came and took her by the hand. I love Jesus. And lifted her up. And how, may, how long? Immediately. Immediately. Do you know if Jesus did not touch her, she would remain like that. And you would think it's the will of God. Don't trivialize an anointed hand. Goodness. Jesus walks in and says, I'm introducing something to this woman's body. That until the arrival of that thing, the condition does not change. That contact. The Bible says immediately the fever did what? That means the fever was a living thing. It could move. Abba, is it, are you not intelligent people? The fever left. Pastor Alpha left me. Before Jesus came, the fever was with her. They gave it all kinds of interpretation. Jesus, look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched. The Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone. Are you seeing that now? Some, it was about the transference of virtue. And it forced the spirit. There was a separation. That means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. That means that growth, that swelling is a sign that there is something with you. Ah, but the hands of Jesus extended through us. You see that? I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you. That means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body. And just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go. There is an agency that will separate you from that pile. You will call it a miracle. There is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated. Look at it. Immediately, not slowly. So the question is not whether you can be healed. The question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit. Because when it happens, the Bible says immediately. And she was so healed, she went straight to the kitchen. Straight to the kitchen from a bed. And he came and took her by the hand. And brought unto him all that were there at even. When the sun did set. Like Koinonia now. They brought unto him. That means there was an information that had reached town. That when we bring certain people to this man, there was something about him that was able to heal them. 
they brought unto him all that were what? Diseased. And them that were possessed with devils. See the kind of people that came to Jesus. As a man of God, if these kinds of people are not coming to you, it's not the issue of I'm not called into this ministry. Something is wrong. Because they should discern that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are, there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick. But let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? One question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray. Are you truly tired of the situation? You see, there's something I think I was sharing with. I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your sister, allow that pain, don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain, the day five of your children said, Daddy, is this how we'll continue? You just get up and say, I'm coming for Koinonia today. I'm, I'm tired of this. That pain was an indication that something is wrong. And that it needs remedy fast. Pain. There are people who will never run and come to God. But you just press one side of your stomach and you just felt ah something is growing what is this next week the thing increased you told a doctor just touch it and say, ah, i don't want to tell you the name pain just say when is that miracle service said the power of god is real it can produce miracles it will produce miracles in your life tonight do you believe it i expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils, listen carefully, I expect that tonight, by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities, lack of favor, delay. There are some of us who are trusting God to return certain things that left your life for years. Whoever told you it cannot, you heard the lady that said they stole her phone, they came with matchet. And stole her phone. I remember she sent me a text. That they came to carry a matchet. Foolish thieves. They don't know that a body without a spirit is dead. The same way you have been carrying a certificate. That's the body. Where is the spirit component? That's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. But when the spirit component comes, let me tell you this. God never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted. A spirit entity must assist you. Even you, if you meet a herbalist, that herbalist is not alone. There is a spirit assisting him. You see that? Yes. Don't walk through life by your strength and power. Please help them. Life will be too hard for you. Is, is the mystery of hardship. Rejecting the assistance of the spirit. I would dare not do ministry without the spirit. What else will I be doing? But with God. With God. All things. Without him. 
you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder i'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone jesus said i'm not alone all these miracles you see i'm being assisted brothers and sisters the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance the realm of the spirit is in partnership you can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside shouting at overflow no no Habba. words are not hammer but when the spirit is upon them that word will enter you like a drug and all of a sudden you will find out that certain things will go <laughs> It will work in Zaria, it will work in Lagos, it will work in London, it will work in Saudi Arabia, it will work everywhere. Are we together? Mm. The spirits that oppress us must give way. I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive. The most important thing is not the ministrations as it were. The most important thing is creating this expectation. Many of us come and we are just hoping. Um, okay, God, I know you will bless me. In the name of Jesus, may God lift you. Amen. I just, well, it was a nice service. And you go back and nothing happens. You keep watching people come to testify. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her, not unto them, there shall be a performance. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord. I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart. You are sick, get ready to be healed. Don't, don't, don't say, well, let's watch and see. Get ready to be healed. You are oppressed of the devil. You may not even know you are oppressed. You just know that nothing is working in your life. I want you to be tired and say, God, will you bring me here? So especially for those of you who came so far, Lord, will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that? There are some of you in ministry, you came to contact fire. Lord, will you leave me? Will I leave my members, my fellowship and come back here and go back? No evidence of favor. I believe him. I believe that he's a mighty man. I believe he's awesome. I have seen his hand. I have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen i present to you the same god yesterday today forever i present to you the same healer yesterday today forever i present to you the same deliverer i present to you the one who took joseph from the prison overnight i present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle. I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus. I present to you your destiny changer. I present to you your destiny maker. I present to you the anointer of men. The one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life. I present to you the prosperer. The one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child. I present to you the one who can give you influence, can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech. We're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch zerubbabel or oh, no no he said who art thou mountain who art thou mountain who art thou infirmity who art thou delay who art thou stagnation before zerubbabel he said before zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain
Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. There is an impartation of the grace for favor. This is what the Lord is telling me. The grace for favor. The grace I'm about to pray for favor. Favor is a revelation that God has given me. My life is a testimony of that reality. I want to pray for you now. Believe. Believe as I pray. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now. Father. Even as you have revealed to me. From this main auditorium. To overflow one. Overflow two. Overflow three. And those online. Lord I release an impartation. For the grace for favor. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I stretch my right hand. And I decree and declare. Step into a new level of favor. 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 We need favor in our lives. Most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve. I say it again. In the name of Jesus, every challenge in your life that only the favor of God can solve, I stand before the God who has helped me and has helped this ministry. I release upon you an oil of favor. Take it now. In the name of Jesus, take favor. Take favor. Receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ. A strange dimension of favor. Favor that will surprise you. Favor that will accelerate your life. When a life, listen to me, when a life has no favor, it is clear. The proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life. Not the absence of money. You can have money. You can have intellect. You can have a job. But when there are no men in your life, you don't have favor. The proof of favor is not the coming of money. The proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that the men that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor, I prophesy them upon you now. I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business, upon your job, upon your projects. May men arise to help you. Hallelujah. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me. I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Abba. Is it charm? What is on you is what brings things to your life. It's not what you want. It is what is on you. In the name of Jesus, 
that anointing that must come on you I declare that it comes on your head right now it comes upon your head right now producing strange results it comes upon your head right now it comes upon your head right now just follow me some of you don't know how you need favor you know you need favor but you don't know what extent I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor you will never be able to be happy on earth no I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard can you help me with some money and I looked at him I said you are not a wise gentleman I know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor I said let's do an experiment I told him I said I will pray for you for favor return next Friday and tell me what happened if nothing happens I will give you money agreed he said yes and I prayed for him and he went brothers and sisters on Monday Monday that's the Monday after that gentleman sent me a text and he said his uncle that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money i said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can I pray that prayer for you again in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled it's almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor May your life change by favor. Receive the grace for favor. Hallelujah. It is favor that brings resources. It is favor that brings opportunity. There are many gifted people. There's no one to reward them. There are many nice people, many wonderful musicians, nobody to place a demand on their grace. It's so annoying when you see someone you are better than, but he has favor and you don't. And yet you have to say yes, sir. Her man did not think Mordecai was good enough, but favor. And he said, everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai, bow the knee, Mordecai is passing. Yes, a gatekeeper. You may not like a person, but when favor is on them, it will veto whatever you think. I pray for you again. Every door that must open in this season to validate favor, I command it to be open now. I command it to be open now. Listen. You're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's nigeria you are not going to buy a car by saving no I practice all these things you are not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace 
that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how satan wants to trap men he would trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family listen sometimes eh it is not warfare that destroys it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make ghosts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute i want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak lift your voice begin to pray begin to pray participate lord i release favor concerning this job pray i release favor i release favor favor concerning my building project a shield. You surround us with favor like a shield. Listen, let me tell you the truth. You see, Ba, this prayer you are praying, if this prayer is truly answered in your life, this is how you will stand. What is this? This favor prayer you see, there are people who have touched up this favor. They can tell you, favor is fearful in its operation. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey, Jimmy, I want to give you water what, that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this many of us what happens is that we're mistaking goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so i'm seeing fire on my hands and I want to pray because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands. Listen, whether you are on a job or whatever it is, you see, these hands you see, they are 
is a mystery it says the the hand of god it was with this hand god made man are we together now this hand you see is a symbol of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray i'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does God do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does God open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from Satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things. You never will truly be able to seek God when certain things have not been solved in your life. It's true. You can't give God your best when you are still thinking of what to eat. You are thinking of what to wear. But when God takes those things away, your prayer life becomes worship. Not just hours of petition in the flesh. hallelujah hallelujah overflow two there's someone the anointing of the spirit is coming on someone overflow two the overflow by the roadside bring the lady hello him of night thy kingdom come thy will be done Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please quickly, we have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him at night. There is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him at night. The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. 
in the name of Jesus Christ I release this woman right now in the name of Jesus Christ I release this woman the devil has put something in this lady's stomach this lady you are holding I command in the name of Jesus remove that evil you have put now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm about to pray and I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen there will be such a massive 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 deliverance now let it not surprise you I've explained to you what this thing is it's a separation you should rejoice when it happens because it means that you are entering a new season a new season a new season a new season
I decree and declare that every force sitting on your destiny as you count three as you count Jesus at the count of three let there be deliverance one two three let them go now let them go now witchcraft manipulations of darkness in the name of Jesus I command a separation through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit I decree I set it as an ordinance in the spirit I announce liberty liberty bring them out I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural, whether the earth, whether fire, that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three, I command those ordinances set on fire. One, two, three. Let there be liberation right now. Every family covenanted to the waters, covenanted to the air, to trees. I set you free now. a map and I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to or your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty Overflow three, please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry, you you they, you you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three. Just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three, overflow three. I want you to shout the name Jesus because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing, and the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough massive deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus overflow three are you ready I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you right now in the name of Jesus everyone under any kind of oppression at the count of three shout Jesus one two three Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. Hold on guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, I want to pray. The Lord is showing me something that is very interesting. The Lord wants to break cycles. There are people, every season certain things happen. Every September, somebody must die. 
every three three years somebody married must divorce in the name of jesus lift your hands you don't have to ask whether or not you are involved don't worry the anointing will look for you i decree and declare right now in the name of jesus the power that activates cycles demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves in the name of jesus i stretch my hands call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear god is not done with you i look at you and i see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if i don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of jesus i stretch my hands i command that devil let her go now in the name of jesus christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what god will do one two get ready three the chain of circles be broken cycles cycles of failure cycles of miscarriages cycles of unfruitfulness by the sound of the spirit be broken now hallelujah be broken now i want to pray um please this man i don't know who that this man yes please quickly we are soon going to pray for the sick i may not have time to prophesy to individuals i'm standing near this lady and i'm seeing a snake this is what i see in the name of jesus i cursed that devil i'm not seeing a human being i'm seeing a snake in the name of the lord jesus christ overflow one i'm seeing the power of god this i just mentioned snake and i was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now i'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what i'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said i give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir i want to pray for you i don't know whether you came here for us you have been but, coming here uh, but i was tra i travel before that so i have not been coming i want to pray for you yes sir if i don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you i'm looking at you and i'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you i'm not a prophet of doom i want to pray for you you love jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh yes, uh, is that true yes sir at you and i'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you yes sir that thing is a charm yes sir. it's not happy it's charm yes. native yes. doctor yes sir huh? yes, that's sir. what will even kill you yes, sir. it's not going to solve your problem yes, sir. the people doing it are well-meaning yes sir. but the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you sir because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it yes, and you violate it will destroy you yes, sir. can i pray for you yes. you have you have taken something in your system now that we will destroy you listen let me tell you when you are pressed we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall going to the devil to get a charm is is you are facilitating your destruction if satan gives you tea here he will hold a knife and stab you at the back father by the mercy of god i pray for this man let him not die in the name of jesus i close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of Jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of Jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you sir the Lord perfects you in Jesus name I pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something Agnes God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue
please if you are not agnes don't come here please your name is agnes where are you from I need to pray for you I'm seeing an attack on your life this attack is coming from Calabar huh are you hearing what I'm saying sir. I have to pray for you where are you from cross river you are from cross river yes sir. Come. I must pray for you Kai. there is somebody the Lord is setting the person free I'm seeing a friend going to a harbor list and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person you are here now in the name that is above all names I'm serious don't think I'm just hyping you in the name of Jesus whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever harbor list in the name of Jesus because that person you keep seeing dead dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we're going to pray for the sick right now ah. there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please, be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you i love you eh? i love you and that's why i'm telling you this you need you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up hmm? i'm not going to say everything i'm seeing but you have to be careful because it's god that saved you now i'm seeing something a virus anyway in the name of jesus christ father i pray for your daughter help her by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree and that tree is this lady and something that was planted and the Lord is saying uproot it I uproot this thing now in the name of Jesus Christ I uproot it now the Spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State I've never been there physically, but I'm seeing Benway, Benway, and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopakariakata, I command and uproot him. Every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father. Every tree I see Benway State. In the mighty name of Jesus, let there be an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting, an uprooting in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you, my dear. You are a nice lady, but there's bad luck in your life. Very bad luck. And the Lord wants to help you. Father, help your daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bad luck be gone. Now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord help you. Come my dear, let me pray for you. I'm about to pray for the sick now. Our time is gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are some... My spirit is heavy to prophesy. But because we have to... I want us to pray for the sick so that i can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but i'm telling you god wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear i want to pray for you in jesus name the lord is rolling away the reproach in your family 
rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of Jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what I'm praying for you for I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the Lord is saying I should tell you that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me I prophesy it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ who is this who Agnes Agnes where is she Abuja. Abuja, sir. your sister yes father in the name of Jesus I pray for this lady where is she Abuja, sir. she loves Jesus yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her eh? in the name of is she married huh? in no. the name of uh, whatever it is in the name of Jesus Christ may God help you mama come let me pray for you it's your season of breakthrough come is this your child come boy come I'm looking at this boy and I'm seeing that God is going to use him this is a small boy boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but I'm going to pray for him Samuel did not know that he will become a great prophet one day when Eli he was just an innocent boy I'm going to pray for him mama please stand up I will pray for you look at me ma please don't be embarrassed but the Lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life this thing they call in house wahala God wants to take it from your life you are a very sincere woman that loves the Lord but this this cause of hardship um, this woman loves the Lord with all her heart. Father, you, what's, what's the name of this boy? Riba. Huh? Lifted. Okay. Your name is Lifted? Yes. Father, I lay hands on Lifted. In the name of Jesus Christ, use him mightily. We are all products of your grace. Lift him and use him mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ and I'm telling you this the month of April is your month of strange breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ the month of April is your month of breakthrough Azuka come leave the camera first let me pray for you and then you keep the camera I want to pray for you because I'm seeing a big project coming for you and this project is going to lift you this is something that has to do with your snapshot but God is bringing someone. It's been something you have desired that God will bring someone to open a door. And truth, you have been faithful. You have even been serving in this house. But I want to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, lift him. Take him to that dimension of grace. I release that anointing upon you. It will no longer be an ordinary camera. I call forth men that will lift you. I command it so. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ wonderful people beautiful ladies but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell in the name of jesus christ i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser in the name of jesus christ we are going to pray for the sick now listen i know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting god for healing and miracle let me pray for this lady how many of you have your prayer request now lift it up ushers your prayer request those online make sure we collect it this this lady let me have her hands lord jesus let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently should be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves 
make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please we'll be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping let your heart be open are we together number two accept whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because i'm, I'm literally sensing as if i want to throw up is the spirit of prophecy there's there's something that the lord is putting in my spirit to release and that's why i want to pray for the sick quickly so that we will pray this prophecy if we do this i'm satisfied in this service we have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time hallelujah jesus someone please help with collecting the request make sure that even those at the extremes of the road their requests are collected please everybody father in the name of jesus we pray by the ministry of the spirit several people serving us contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus my beautifier, you have taken away the shame, taken away the pain. You make my life so beautiful. My beautifier, you have taken away the shame, taken away the pain. You make me just like you, my beautifier.
miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hey, 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 miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. this nation in the name of Jesus Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer 
so Lord I transfer the trust of your people to you the one who is able to meet every need and on the strength of the grace that only comes from you and in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the resurrected lamb the one who is most victorious I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus Lord as I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge every challenge every challenge no matter what it is I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen to me no matter what it is no matter what it is provided it found its way here in the name of Jesus Christ the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony there are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered may they lack the sleep there are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered may they be promoted there are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered may they be laid to rest in the name of Jesus Christ let's pray if they are still praying for you in any of the overflows don't worry you can just connect with them while I pray for you by the grace of God you will not write your request twice I thought I was done but I just felt drawn again to it whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere may the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you as long as God grants me the grace I will never stop prophesying over you it is the greatest thing I think I can do if I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God I may not be able to accurately address everyone but when it comes to prophecy everyone can receive are we together now wherever you are you can receive you've heard the testimonies you've seen the things that happen the Bible says everyone who speaks let him speak according to the measure of grace there are some things this anointing can do and let's trust God that it happens in your life let's pray lift your hands father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already that from January February you've not known joy I declare that as this week ends that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too the Bible says no weeping endures for a night it says but joy comes with the morning I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say Lord I've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the God I serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting God for a better job in the name of Jesus between now and March miracle service return with your miracle job return with your miracle job return with your miracle job anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is you've been kept at a level in the name of Jesus I open the doors for you rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ every 
manifestation of delay in your life. Others move forward, but when it gets to your turn, something just clamps you in one position. Or slow progress. Slow progress is as destructive as delay. I command speed to your life. I speak speed to your life. I prophesy speed to your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of Jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever I pray for those in business here I speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are trusting God to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen God correct things in strange ways here I command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result I don't care how long in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we correct it right here anyone here involved in any kind of project building project whatever major project you or your loved ones I decree and declare the finishers anointing comes upon that project in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray over your finances listen let me tell you this the Bible says believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe God will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you I give you two weeks from today in the name of Jesus Christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying you are thinking oh God will use a B leave whoever God will use to him I'm not talking business in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again I prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to God a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to Jesus through you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through Joshua Selman in the name of Jesus those hands that are stretched towards me I prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of Jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house I release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of Jesus Christ whoever needs to make peace with you I decree and declare the grace of God compels them to make peace with you hallelujah who 
whoever has been directed by God to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying God is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of Jesus the devil wants to stop them I clear the way for your contact with them in the name of Jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if God does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious I pray that between now and Sunday the God that I serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my God step in and surprise you We're rounding up whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant I say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of Jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow I will do something then in the night something happens in the name of Jesus everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand hallelujah finally I call your destiny helpers from the north the south the east the west whether they are in this country or outside this country I don't know how God will make them meet you but I declare they must meet you in the name of Jesus they will not only meet you they will bless you in the name of Jesus they will not only bless you they will continue blessing you I multiply dreams and visions and encounters in your life whatever has choked away your prayer life you used to pray for two three four five hours now you pray for 10 15 minutes you are drowsy you are tired it's an attack it is an attack it is the devil you used to be consistent but right now you wake up in the night you pray for 10 minutes you are snoring back in the name of Jesus tonight let there be revival upon your prayer life revival over your prayer life the appetite to study the word you once had it but it went away and for some of you you've not read your bible since last friday it's not that you don't want to the grace to make it happen is no longer there i command tonight may that fire for the word come upon you hallelujah for all your loved ones who are connected to you whether they are born again or not because you came here tonight I stretch my hand may the grace and the blessing that came to you may it get to them too in the name of Jesus Christ give Jesus a clap Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again 